Water Resources Group at Washington State University is focused on understanding hydrologic systems and bringing innovation and solutions to problems that we see with water quantity and water quality. These are highly tied to the climate change effects we see happening now and into the future and associated land use change. Because these systems that we study are very complex, they involve decision making with humans, we also interact a lot with people who study economics, sociology and the associated political implications of that. And because of this work, we automatically integrate it back into our own work and we do a lot of integrated hydrologic modeling with that. Climate change is impacting the Columbia River Basin. The Columbia River is critical for irrigated agriculture, for hydropower generation, for several fish species that are endangered. Our precipitation is falling primarily during the wintertime as snow, and this stores up in the snowpack and, and then is released in the summertime for summer water use. And so what we're worried about with climate change is that warming will cause a reduction of the snowpack and that will therefore reduce summer water availability and cause an increasing uh, frequency and magnitude of droughts. So we're doing quite a bit of research to identify solutions for this problem. With the reduction of snowpack as a storage, we're looking to other types of storage. There's, there is some artificial or reservoir storage in the Columbia River Basin, but it's limited compared to other watersheds. It can only hold about 30% of the mean annual flow in these reservoirs. And so we're looking to other types of storages, and one of those is groundwater as a storage system. The problem is that this needs to be done in a sustainable way. The focus of my work in the Water Resources Group is to characterize large hydrologic systems. So I'm really interested in understanding how humans are using and impacting groundwater bodies. I use a diversity of tools to do this from satellite remote sensing to individual citizens monitoring their own groundwater. Ultimately, I'm interested in answering how much water do we have, how much water do we use, and how much water do we need. Well, I would say that groundwater quality is important and it goes hand in hand with quantity because as you are reducing quantity, you start to care more about the quality. And the only way that we can think about quality is by understanding how it actually flows in the subsurface, what kinds of things it's picking up, how it's interacting with different things that are out there. And especially with groundwater, because it ha it's been in the ground for so long, it's got residence time of thousands of years. So whatever has been going on, whatever things that it's been collecting and interacting with, that's what makes the quality important. Some of the concerns about groundwater contaminants are that they can come from just about anywhere. Depending on what you plan on using the water for determines whether or not something is really a contaminant or whether or not it is just something that's moving with the water. So there are going to be things that are naturally dissolved in the water, like uh, certain types of metals that are in your drinking water that are totally fine, but at high concentrations those can start to become a bit of a problem. The things that we're a little bit more concerned about have to do with what we would call anthropogenic contaminants, and those are ones that humans have put into the environment. So these can include things like fertilizers, these could be fuel additives, uh, these could also be things that are naturally occurring that are stimulated by something that we put in the environment. So bacteria would be one of those. So many lakes in our region are showing signs of, uh, of impairment. And it's, it's clear that these, uh, these lakes in the summertime are almost green with algae and have high vegetation growth. The smaller lakes are showing this earlier than the bigger lakes. And the, the reasons for it is that many more people are using the lakes, their recreation on the lake and living around the lake, and the lakes are warming due to higher temperatures. The problems that we see with the, the bigger lakes is that we are probably not understanding that the little lakes are early warning systems for them. We need to understand the causes and we are doing research on those causes and one of them is groundwater flow to lakes. Once groundwater is already highly contaminated, it takes a long time to reverse that effect. My experience working with WSU's Engineers Without Borders has been great. When I was in Panama as a Peace Corps volunteer after graduating from WSU, I was trying to solve a problem in the community. They wanted water year round. And I didn't see how that could be done with the resources that they had. I thought what they really needed was information about their groundwater resource, but that information wasn't available from any local agency. So over phone conversations and email conversations with Dr. Carl Olson, one of my past professors here at the university, 
uh, Engineers Without Borders was created. And since then, they've been back on two, soon to be three trips to Panama. They've mapped the community. They've been able to see the resources on firsthand. Uh, we've installed a solar powered pump system for that serves about 200 people. And we're planning on building a community outreach center in the capital of the reservation I was living in to just keep on going. I see quite a few challenges, but also opportunities when I look ahead at groundwater work in the future. The biggest challenge is just raising awareness that groundwater is a crucial part of our water cycle and also a crucial part of the water supply that we use every day. I think the more we can help people understand that when you turn on the tap, that water is not just coming from the rivers that we can see, but also the aquifer systems beneath, the better we'll be at planning and managing this resource in the future.